Has the Antichrist been revealed? I have video. You want to see it? Oh, yeah. What is the deal with this particular person in Jerusalem today? Why do all the Hasidic rabbis go to visit him? Why do they meet with him? Why do they kiss his hand? Why do they crowd around him? Why do they hang on every single word? What are they saying about the miraculous healings that he has caused them and the salvation that comes through his blessing? Yeah, that's happening right now in Jerusalem. Could it be that the Antichrist has already been revealed and you didn't even get the memo? What do we believe? What do we know about the Antichrist? I've been going through a book by Taylor Marshall on the apocalypse and it's very good. Well, we're going to jump into that. By the way, my name is Joe McLean. I host a radio program called A Catholic Take, where we look at the world through a Catholic lens. I'd love for you to hang out with us. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and let us know what you think in the comments below. Yanuka Rav Shlomo Yauda. Could he be the Antichrist today? False Christ and false prophets. Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. In his book, Antichrist and Apocalypse, Taylor Marshall quotes this verse. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much as to deceive, if possible, even the elect. That last part should give you the chills. There will come an Antichrist who will deceive even the elect. I want to get into what that means. But yesterday, I happened across a post on X, on, on the Twitters. It's an old post. It's not even a new one. But for some odd reason, it's making the rounds today. And I saw this post and it caught me off guard because it says, Is Messiah born? Yes, and he lives in Israel, and he had meetings with some of the rabbis. Did the Messiah reveal himself? Not yet. Is Yanuka Rav Shlomo Yehuda the Jewish Messiah? He has not claimed it yet, even though he did perform many miracles. I was very fascinated by this, and of course, when I see a thread... I just got to pull on it. I got to yank on that thread. And I went and yanked for a few hours, actually, last night. As I researched this person, Rav Shlomo Yehuda, the Yunuka, they call him. Who is this guy, this mysterious character, this interesting, mysterious character that seems to be attracting so much attention in Israel? A very interesting character. Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this guy because although he personally, as far as I could tell, to my knowledge, he personally does not claim to be Messiah. However, comma, the Hasidic Jews seem to think of him like he could be the Messiah. Rav Shlomo Yehuda Bari, born in Spain in around 1988, a child prodigy. By the time he was 17, some said 15, some sources said 15, by the time he was a teenager, let's just say, let's split the diff. He was a teenager. He had already memorized the Torah. He could recite the Torah by sheer memory, as well as the Talmud. Do you have any idea how big the Talmud is? It's massive, massive. He could recite the Talmud. He could recite the Jewish mystics and, and more from memory. By the time he was a teenager, he was attracting disciples to himself. People were already flocking to him and to be students of his when he was a teenager. Already, he, his reputation was growing uh, amongst Hasidic Jews. Now, his father, his father is from the uh, Assyrian side, but I couldn't find almost anything about his mom. I don't know why. There was just not much information shared, talked about, at least in the sources and the time that I spent on the topic about his mother, just his father. And now his father goes back to the Assyrian line. He was given a prearranged marriage, so he did not get to choose his wife. I have no idea anything about his wife. I couldn't find any information on that. But uh, here's the deal. A big, large crowds. He attracts large crowds of Hasidic Jews. Now, I think it's important to point out, it's not as though all of Israel is thinking of him in terms of uh, being the Messiah. So, so far as I could tell, it's really just Hasidic or ultra-Orthodox Jews. And I did check the stats on this. As of right now, ultra-Orthodox Jews represent roughly 17% of the population in Israel. 
So that's not a majority. But amongst these ultra-Orthodox Jews, they seem to be looking at him in ways that I think should be chilling. They use such words to, to describe him as illuminated. Salvation comes through his blessing. Transcending the forces of nature. This is the language that these rabbis, these, uh, these men who are considered the, the greatest minds in Jewish thought and law, they're the ones calling this young man who happens to be in his 30s. In fact, he was 33 when he came to, to the Western Wall in 2021. And now everybody in the Hasidic community seems to be flocking to him. They kiss his hand. They seek his blessing. And now there are many reports about his miracles that have been attributed to his blessings. I'm talking about miracles like uh, healing from cancer. Uh, prophecies that have come true that he has, he has spoken. So, a mysterious character, to say the least. And what's also very interesting and fascinating about this person is that he is of small significance. I mean, I would imagine that maybe even most Jews don't even really know who he is, but the fact that they call him the Yanuka is a term that seems to indicate he is very, very special. And this is why everybody seems to be flocking towards him right now. So, all right, so that's that's Yanuka Rav Shlomo Yauda. Could he be the Antichrist today? I have no idea. And as I said earlier, to my knowledge, he personally has not made that claim. It's other people who are claiming that they are already meeting with the Messiah right now in Jerusalem. And this is the man who seems to be the potential person for that. Is it true? I don't know. But I will say this. Let's jump into the Antichrist. I find it very fascinating because as I'm preparing to go to, go to Rome to film a, uh, a documentary film on the end times, I've been going through several, uh, a stack of books. One of them is this one, Antichrist and Apocalypse, the 21 Prophecies of Revelation Unveiled and Described by Dr. Taylor Marshall. You should go check out this book. It's a great book. What do we believe? And he, he spends a large amount of time just talking about the Antichrist. Who is he? What do we know about him? What do we believe about him? And what do we believe are the timeline of events? Number one, he will be a true human man. He will not be the devil incarnate. The devil's not going to take upon flesh like Jesus take upon, took upon flesh because the devil cannot create. He can mock, but he can't create. He can pretend, but he can't do what God does. He is not God's equal. He is not God's equal and opposite. That's not how that works. He is a creature and he can only mock and ape God. Number two, he will be conceived of fornication. Interesting. I couldn't, I couldn't really find anything on Rav Shlomo's, the Yunuka's mother. I'm not sure what the story is there. Maybe his mom and dad were perfectly great people and maybe that excludes him from the list of Antichrist. I don't know. I couldn't find any information. He will be an Israelite. Did you know that the Antichrist is going to be an Israelite? Yeah, it's true. In fact, point number four on the list is the Antichrist will keep the Sabbath and follow the Jewish laws of Moses, circumcision and kosher living. Let me share some quotes with you from Taylor Marshall's book. Chapter 13 of the Apocalypse, says Taylor Marshall, introduces the concept of the beast, of the Antichrist, who is a beast rising from the sea. It also introduces his sidekick, the false prophet, as a beast rising from the land. Satan and these two beasts form an unholy trinity against God and his people. He mocks God. If God is a trinity of divine persons, so he has to come up with his anti-trinity. And that is what we're going to be seeing in the end times. He goes on to quote, The Antichrist will rise from a modest nation. Now this is quoting St. Jerome's commentary on on the book of Daniel. And he's quoting here from chapter 11 of St. Jerome's commentary. St. Jerome gave us the Latin Vulgate, which today we get the Douay Rheims from. St. Jerome is one of the foremost scripture scholars in the history of planet Earth. And he says this, the Antichrist will rise from a modest nation that is from the people of the Jews. He will be so lowly and despised that he will not be given royal honor, but he shall obtain rule through treachery and deceit. He will do this because he will feign himself as the leader of the covenant that is the law 
and the covenant of God. So the Antichrist will be from Jewish ancestry. He will follow the law, the pharisaical version of the law, and he will want the whole world to do the same. Oh yeah, it's true. The Peshitta renders, says Taylor Marshall, quote, false Christ in Matthew 24, 24 as a liar Messiah. So Christ explicitly warns us that liar messiahs will in fact arrive to deceive not merely the secular world, but chiefly Christ's own disciples. The attack will be into the interior of his church, his elect. The attack will be into the interior of his church, the elect. Our Lord warned us in Matthew 24 that even the elect can be led astray by the Antichrist. So point number five on Taylor's list in his The Antichrist Summarized Chapter. Before the Antichrist is revealed, the gospel must be preached to all nations. Has it been preached to all persons? No, but to all nations, yes. 100%, absolutely, the gospel has gone to all four corners of the earth, even if it hasn't reached the ears of every single human person. It has gone to every corner of planet earth. That is demonstrable. Point number six, his coming will be signaled by the great apostasy, a mass falling away from Christ. Huh, what would that look like? I'm just curious. What would would a great apostasy look like if it didn't look like 67% of American Catholics do not believe in the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist? What would it look like if it does not look like prelates, cardinals, leaders of dicasteries, dare I say, even to the highest levels of of the Vatican, proclaiming and teaching things that we formerly believed to be horrible, evil, mortal sins, heretical teaching being spread by prelates of the church today? The great apostasy looks like confusion. It looks like what once was taught as true is now all of a sudden bad. That's what the great apostasy looks like. Point number seven, he will deny that Jesus is the is of the Father or of the flesh. Now, it's interesting because when I look at these posts, these videos of this pretender, Messiah, one of the claims on this post is that this person, quote, any chance that he is the Messiah? We cannot comment on this at this moment, but his legitimacy is already higher than Jesus of Nazareth. This channel, by the way, even though we'll link to this, you got to be warned, this is a seriously anti-Christian channel, very obviously pro-Jewish channel, so just be ready for that. Taylor Marshall says, quoting, The Apostle Paul, as noted above, relates that the Antichrist sits in the temple of God, showing himself as if he were God. A similar picture is given by Christ. The abomination of desolation, which was spoken of by Daniel the prophet, will be standing in the holy place. Whether seated, as Paul says, or standing, as Christ says, the Antichrist will enthrone himself in the holy place, which is the temple of God. Is it going to be the third temple in Jerusalem, or will it be the church? Because a lot of people believe it'll be in Rome, at St. Peter's Basilica. But no, in fact, the Antichrist will be of Jewish origin, from the tribe of Dan in particular, as St. Jerome believes. And he will enact a Pharisaical Judy, uh, uh, law, the Pharisaical law, the Pharisaical version of things, just like the Judaizers did that St. Paul so vigorously fought against in every single one of his writings, practically speaking. I think his letter to the Philemon didn't uh, include anything. But otherwise, it was like all anti-Judaizer all the time. It's fascinating. Go read it. So that's what the Antichrist is going to be like, and he's going to want the third temple being built, just like Rav Shlomo does today. The Yanuka is pushing for the third temple there in Jerusalem on the Temple Mount. It's just, it's fascinating, isn't it? And he will be inside that temple. Now, here's the kicker, though. Previously, previously in the kingdom of Israel, when Solomon built his temple, what did he put there? The Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was the seat, the mercy seat of God. And inside the mercy seat of God was what? The Ten Commandments. It was the portion of the bread that came down from heaven in the, in, uh, in, uh, in the manna in the wilderness. And it was the staff of Aaron, the law, the prophets, the, the, the miracle food from heaven. If the Old Testament was miracle food, how much more the New Testament? If the Old Testament was a foreshadowing of greater things to come, how much more that which has come? 
Just curious. The Holy Eucharist is, in fact, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the actual Messiah, the Son of God who took upon flesh. The only way by which we might see the Father in heaven is through him. And Our Lady, his mother, leads us to a greater fidelity, a greater relationship, a greater intimacy with him. Let that sink in for a moment. But it reminds me, because the Antichrist will claim to be God, he will set himself up in the temple, the third temple in Jerusalem, but he will want his image to be adored in every church, just like Xi Jinping and Mao Zedong and the communist ideology that spreads as the heirs of Russia have spread all over the world. This we can expect that in our churches, the Antichrist's image will be placed, but it will be in the temple that he will rule. Taylor Marshall goes on to say the Great Tribulation will also enforce the abolition of sacred scripture, baptism, the Eucharistic sacrifice of the Mass, and the other sacraments for three and a half years. Number eight, he will claim to be the true Messiah or Christ, and that is why he must shut off all religion. All of our sacraments will be taken away, just like they did in 2020 during the great pandemic, the dress rehearsal for great things to come. If they can get them to do that, if they can get them to shutter their doors out of fear, imagine what else they can accomplish. Point number nine, Christian worship and sacraments will be banned. Point number 10, idolatry will be banned. So the Muslims have to get along with this. How in the world is that gonna be accomplished, might you ask? Look at what we're seeing today. This on the mobile, the global uprising, the global jihad, the global Al-Aqsa flood on Friday, October the 13th. How in the world? I mean, they're, they're, they're riding in caravans shouting F to the Israelites, rape their daughters on bullhorns in the streets of London. Point number 11, he will appoint a false prophet who will work, the, who will work three false miracles. Miracle number one, he will apparently cause fire to come down from heaven. Like saying a nuclear blast. I don't know. Just is just throwing them out there. Just throwing out examples. Like could be a nuclear missile. You know, some prophecies say seven nuclear missiles will impact the United States, killing a third of all uh, Earth's population. Kind of like a third of the stars fell. The third of the angels fell. I don't know. Could be linked. I don't know. Could be an asteroid. Could just be fire coming from the sky. Who knows? Two, the second miracle. He will make the icon of the Antichrist speak. So there will be an icon in uh, in places like in your church, for instance, under the rule of the Antichrist that will be placed and um, will be made to venerate it, will be made to adore it, and then it will speak miraculously, this icon. And uh, the the prophet, the, ant the Antichrist prophet, will make that happen because they'll all be controlled and possessed by the devil and demons. The third miracle, he will apparently resurrect the Antichrist from the dead. So that's an interesting question. When and where does that happen? Clearly that hasn't happened yet. There are no major headlines today about a man being killed and being resurrected from the dead, having a head wound. Is it possible that in the war with the 10 kings, in his battle with the three, he is shot in the head, dies, and is resurrected, which causes fear and trembling in everyone else, causing them all to, you must be the Messiah. Is that possible? Is in the aftermath of a World War III where things ramp and kick up to a degree where the whole world goes to killing each other and then we kick off nuclear uh, weapons uh, like hypersonic EMPs from Russia that could explode over our atmosphere here in America and shutting us all down and putting us back into the dark ages. Are we ready for this? I don't know. It could happen. It's possible. Point number 12. The world will worship the Antichrist as the only God from the third temple in Jerusalem. Point number 13. He will sit in the rebuilt temple in Jerusalem as a false messianic God. So not from Rome, although his icon probably be, be there, but he will rule from Jerusalem. Very, he goes into great detail about how Jerusalem is the whore that rides the beast who fornicated with Rome, who fornicated with Babylon and the kings of the earth. Jerusalem is the horror of Babylon. As much as we would love to say Rome, it is not. Rome does have its issues and they are definitely part of the equation. Don't get, they're not off the hook, but it, the seven hills of Jerusalem are the ones we're talking about. That goes into great detail and explanation in the book that Taylor produced called The Antichrist and the Apocalypse. 
Goes on to say, point number 14, he will reign in partnership with the Ten Kings. Point number 15, with an enormous army, he will persecute Christians in the Battle of Armageddon, Gog and Magog to come. He says the Great Tribulation will also enforce the abolition of sacred scripture. We talked about that. He says it will become a hor- it will become a time of horrible and painful martyrdom for those who love and serve Christ. St. John sees the Great Tribulation martyrs filling into heaven or filing into heaven. These are they who are come out of Great Tribulation. It is the time when Satan shall be loosed. Apocalypse 20, verse 7. Point number 16, and we're almost done. Jerusalem will be destroyed again. Point number 17, Jesus will slay the Antichrist. And point number 18, the devil, uh, the Antichrist, and the false prophet will be cast into the lake of fire. And uh, like I said, there's a whole other section on the timing of the chastisements. I want to get into that, but not today. I'll do that on uh, Monday. So, 